I began to question everything. I could feel the darkness of depression invading my life. And I allowed anxiety to infect my mind. My drive for friendships, filmmaking, fishing, and life itself began to slip away like sand through my fingers. We are all connected to a media system that tries to tell us how we should live, look, talk, and believe. Without realizing it, I allowed this obvious conditioning to infect my thinking as well. I began to reject a life based in greed and fear. This truth, ignored by most, created an independent freedom, amazing friendships, and even more amazing adventures. But it also created isolation and deep introspection. The truth about myself and this world became brutally clear. I lost connection to others, which at the time seemed to make things worse. Instead of following my deepest instincts, I stayed away from the lakes, rivers, and life that helped me understand myself and make sense of this world. I became distracted by thoughts, overthinking the past, and I stopped fishing and competing altogether. When the dust in my life finally settled and it appeared right side up, I felt a gnawing that must be at the back of every competitive fisherman's mind. It's like a nail being driven through the back of my skull. It becomes a single internal force. It's only focus, obsessive pursuit. I began to think less and follow my instincts. The universe began to open up. I began to clearly see the driving force behind myself and my brothers. It had been there all the time. Fear, ego, confusion, and often frustration had blocked me from this reality. We all have the ability to find the truth about ourselves. You must have the courage to be brutally honest. But trust me, it is the only way you will discover who you truly are and the power you possess. If you are willing to look beyond the beliefs, ideas, fears, desires, and illusory thoughts that have trapped a life's potential, your universe will expand and your perceptions will change. You will realize that your journey is just beginning. stiff arm and this is not what you think it is I can assure you ladies I'm confident that some of you compare fishing to watching the grass grow ask you this. Have you ever considered what drives a man into obsession, passion, complete insanity? If you have ever searched for the answers to these questions in your husband, boyfriend, father, or brothers, then ladies, this film is for you. Number one. 
Yeah, look at that. He's <laughs> pissed. Yeah, three and a half. Yes, this film is about fishermen, but it also reveals the truth behind our undeniable, relentless pursuit. I call this guiding force pure instinct. This is the heart of Montana. Perhaps the heart of our world. It took a lifetime here to discover the truth about myself. And the pathway was forged by those who came before me. Understanding who created this place and time is irrelevant. All that is required is the humble understanding that somehow I am blessed. Fishermen know this truth. Some beliefs really are more logical, rational, and supported by evidence than others, of course. But it is not my purpose or place to judge the validity of beliefs. Rather, I am interested in the question of how we came to these beliefs in the first place, and how we hold on to them in the face of either no evidence or even contradictory evidence. Almost every tournament bass fisherman asks himself the same question just before the competition Good. begins. Somewhere in the early morning, a thought will enter his mind. Will someone be on my spot? Will the weather cooperate? Do I have the right baits, lures, gear? Kind of the sound maybe a thought out of it. How big do I have to go to compete with this field? Did I waste my practice time? Am I even supposed to be yeah, here? <laughs> yes, I know. These sound like different questions. But they are all the same. What will happen in the unknown? Questions are data driven, but fishermen are not computers. <laughs> Their minds are not designed to crunch the astronomical data, possibilities, and moving parts in the day ahead. Fear.
clouds the mind. You're kind of getting an idea, this framework in your mind. You're like, okay, I kind of see what's influencing. Um, this is life in Montana. And this is what it's like for these men in their lives and this experience. every once in a while like just I don't know if Lawrence is better on the 2D mics as it is I can like see a fish like swimming if I just see like little blips every once in a while but not even like not even color just like little blips and then maybe just a little bit of purple and then like I can watch them like swimming by yeah Once that, once it gets cold, I just like strictly go small mouth out here. Yeah, good small. Oh, nice. Oh, fuck, you almost had it. I still got that shot camera. Did you, right? Yeah. There we go, got him anyway. Yeah, he did. I've caught so many large mouth this year, like more than I have in a long, long time out here. In Montana, the idea of fishing or hunting is more than tradition. It's a common way of life, and at times, a way of survival. It assists in developing the instinctual senses available to all humans. These are obvious instinctual abilities. The grasping of my weapon, the sensory focus, the long strides, the force to continue the pursuit. To claim my skills, achievements, failures, possessions, knowledge, understanding, or even the location I exist with something I did is simply and factually untrue. But believe what you want. The goal is to win. And understanding the truth of who you are, or could be, will achieve that greater goal. 
think sometimes when you look at the planet, and, and, and a lot of people will struggle with their life, like, well, why does this happen? Why is this happening? I don't agree with that. I'm like, well, that's just, there's nothing to disagree with. Just observe. Just witness, like you said. Just witness what's happening. That's all, that's all, all you can do at the end of the day. When I first began shooting this film, people would ask me, Don't let it go. Well, who exactly will want to see this film? What would compel them to watch your content in a sea of millions of choices? Don't to be completely honest, I was not interested in the question or its closely related answer. The film will find those it is supposed to, and its message will be understood by those who are ready to listen. See, I wish you would have came over and talked to me earlier today. I know you're busy fishing. What? Like many Montana families, my grandfather took the time to teach me the lay of the land and the surrounding waters. This Montana experience of my youth triggered a pursuit and a life organizing my proximity, close enough so I do not lose sight of my prey. These guys doing the initial, a lot of them, they're just constantly trying to prove something, you know, about how they're catching fish or why they're catching them or why they're not catching them. They have a, you know. That's a good start, though. This lifetime has also taught me at least 10,000 ways how not to catch a fish. I wish we would have been doing this all day, right here. I know that now. But I've also learned the truth of this world. meeting Mother Nature face to face. This deep instinctual pursuit is driven by an ancestral force hidden in our DNA, triggered by our environment, conditioned by our history and traditions. A force inside. Those are, the, those are just the jackhammers I like. That most fishermen cannot describe. We are all born with instinct. How did I become obsessed? And more importantly, where does this all end? A lot of it, what you're suggesting, um, is very, very valuable. It's kind of like I tell people, it's like, well, whatever the, whatever the earth's telling you right now, that's, that's, that's what you needed to hear. Regardless of what you want to hear or what you, what you believe you, you, can, you should know, uh, uh, life's about discovery. Maybe.
After over 40 years of pursuing Montana's game fish, I began to wonder if it was the pursuit, the fish, or something else driving me to great lengths. How did I get here? And how is this moment maintained in balance? How have I not fallen off the edge or destroyed myself? I blend with all of my senses. On the water, my body becomes aware. Awareness allows me to feel the moment. I am beyond thoughts. Then I leave, uh, hopefully on Thursday, Friday at the latest, as late as I can leave for Fort Peck, and I'm going to film and fish with Zach Lugabill up at Fort Peck for five days. Oh, hell yeah. Right down all of his spot. <laughs> Some uh, the oil field guys that like to fish over there, you know. There's just, it, it's, it's, you know, you've got a, thousands and thousands, maybe millions of smallmouth. You got like a handful of guys fishing for him. Yep, I know. <laughs> That's the way it goes, man. I'm pretty sure he took a job in North Dakota so he could fish four pack. Shit, yeah, dude, it's incredible. That's it's just uh, having five days on on there with him. We should be able to catch some really awesome video. Oh, you know how many five and six pounders you guys gonna get? Like a hundred. <laughs> know. I'm serious, yeah. The opportunity to fish with Zach Lugabill was a tremendous experience. Another thing will go on that, like a lot of times when you're when I'm fishing off my graph and I'm visually seeing a active school of smallmouth, if I drop that bait down it, down to those fish, and I move that as that bait falls, there's a 50-50% chance that they won't bite that bait. It has to be a natural presentation to them 100%. Like if you move your move anything on that on that downfall through the water column and you move that, sometimes they won't bite the bait. Like it's a natural, natural thing of, of like what you're doing, or you know the presentation of to the fish. He currently dominates the bass fishing tournament series on Fort Peck Reservoir. In 2016, Zach took the entire year off to fish everything from local tournaments to the TBF qualifiers. His success took him to nationals, a tournament that provides anglers with a chance for a spot at the Forest Wood Cup and the opportunity to compete on the Pro Tour. There are few men as authentic as Zach Lugabill. But until you spend a day fishing with Zach, it is difficult to describe or understand how good this individual is at tracking down his prey. By what power did I arrive at this place in life? I once thought I was in control of my own destiny. I feel completely at home in the Fort Peck Reservoir drainage. My ancestors, the A'ani, called this region home for thousands of years. It is somewhat superhuman, or at the least, psychopathic. The 
Fort Peck region of Montana is a hauntingly large water with more fishable shoreline than the coast of California. Zach Lugabill is the first tournament fisherman to bring in multiple record-setting weights in tournaments during the same year. On this lake, Zach has more first place finishes than any fisherman with a pulse. And all before the age of 35. This region of Montana is known for its trophy game and fish. To an outdoorsman, the region is world class and hostile. The surrounding terrain is some of Montana's most remote wilderness. This fish has got some weight. He held up there anyways, like he did. God, I wish we would have stopped on some of these spots yesterday. I know Mike did, so they must not have been here. I don't know. There's another fish that came up with this one. We just went back down to the bottom. Oh, damn it. Sorry. The massive Fort Peck region reads like an adventure novel. It is home to one of the most complete T-Rex skeletons ever found. Lewis and Clark made their passageway through here on a U.S. mapping expedition. that you this year to like just like uh, we got in a flurry last time me and mike did uh that guy that in the campground yeah we caught like 28 pounds here in like 20 minutes like, that i mean those were just our big fish you, you can just imagine the fours and the four and a half and the, and the fives or whatever to have your own success you need to have you need to do it through your own work like a lot of these guys nowadays in the tournament scene, they like to uh, they like to follow people around and mark waypoints on spots, and they're not doing the homework. They're not in tune with what's even going on. They just know that this person or this group of people has been successful fishing these spots, so they pull in on these spots, thinking they're going to have the same results, and that's not how this works at all. Because um, I, I know that for a fact. You get The dedication, commitment, energy, focus, vision, and supernatural effort required to live this far out on the edge, pursuing fishing efficiencies, size, quality, consistency, the idea of it is borderline insanity and brilliance all at the same time. <laughs> it is authentic confidence based on confirming the hard truth and trusting your rightful instincts. confirm where I stand today. 
I must look at the events that have shaped my mind's perceptions and the reliance on its judgment. Don't let go. Most people look at their past, history, traditions, and life's events and begin to define themselves, prove themselves, stand for something they had no effect over or influence in creating. It's called identity. Its only source of purpose in this world is to create mental distractions, delusions, and ego-filled fantasies. Believing in something for no other reason than identity. Everything outside of what your senses have confirmed has been told to you. Everything. Don't let go. But I'm not here to question the validity of beliefs. Believe what you want. The goal is to win. And understanding where you came from will reveal the truth behind why you rely on unreliable thoughts. In Montana, this region is known as Blackfeet country. reservation reminded me of my childhood. My grandfather's gentle smile 
in his words of wisdom. Without instincts, I have nothing. Keith is a Blackfeet Indian. He grew up and lives on his native reservation bordering Glacier National Park. Keith has never left the land of his ancestors. I grew up in Indian country, traveling with my father as a young man between what seemed like a multitude of reservations with names like Crow, Rocky Boy, Flathead, Blackfeet, and Fort Belknap. When I began filming Keith, he was, as I expected, quiet. Is, is this the one you're talking about? No, that's a great look. <laughs> That's a Goddard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you talking to one about the overwing on the top? Um, I've got some. He responded to my questions in an authentic manner. Yet often he did not volunteer information unless pressed. Yeah, it's like a stone fly. Oh, oh yeah, the buffaloes. So Bob talked about those buffaloes. Right. He's the one that showed me this pattern and it was amazing. We caught so many fish with this pattern. And here's the one with the, all it's all buffalo mixed with uh, red, uh, like a red tinsel type material, flash. So it's just buffalo hair? Uh, yeah, it's all buffalo hair. Wow, what is it? Holy cow! But in general, my experience is that most Native Americans rely heavily on their instincts. This may be cultural or hidden somewhere in the DNA of North America's indigenous tribes who were hunting massive herds of buffalo less than five generations ago. Thank you. 
how to return to his instinctual origins. This is what makes him dangerous in competition. And why competitors naturally fear his presence on the water. pros like Rick Klun and Denny Brower. If you don't know these names, you have virtually no chance of competing against Drew. Rick and Denny's influence on Drew's life, again, provided him with a chance to see the truth of an instinctual fisherman up close. This type of information to a competitive bass fisherman is invaluable. into a competition. We are driven by forces beyond our understanding. All humans descend from the same tribe. generations ago when there were only a few of us we learned to run the one and only ability that make all humans the very same entity all other factors are either regional or cultural Running resolved the evolutionary challenges of hunger, danger, communication, survival, and pursuit. Having the opportunity to reflect on my life's journey, the challenges, joy, Sadness and truth are glaring. I can no longer convince myself to live a lie. The mind and ego's hold over me has faded. This path chose me. 
thousands of generations of big game hunters pre-programmed by DNA to be triggered into action long before my birth. Once I arrived on the planet, I encountered the correct combination of events. And my pursuit began. So I think I'm just gonna ride up here for a little bit, all right? All right. And we'll get... Is that like a video camera or is that just a camera camera? It's a, it's a movie cinema camera. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, you can kick it up. Don't let it go. Chasing a bitch. I want to go way up to the Narrows, where basically we can we can uh, listen to Buke Elgo and catch Elk Bugle, and uh, you got one on the first. Oh yeah, there's been so many fish on this point this year already. There's still a couple of them here. Anyway. Yeah, too bad you couldn't. There'd have been no way you could have got like a drone or anything here that tournament day. It was white capping right here. It was blowing like 30 all day. Don't let it go. Oh, I'm sure. Chasing a beam. I respect these men because they live beyond fear. Self-doubt. And the influence of others. In this life, I had been searching for an event. Or a pattern. My father always warned me that I might not see the forest for the trees. Knoxon Reservoir is the most competitive bass fishing water in Montana. Anglers from across the state come here to cut their teeth. The lake or impoundment 
sets up perfect for bass fishing. Knoxon is home to both largemouth and smallmouth bass. If you can compete on these waters, you can probably compete anywhere in the nation. When you sign up for a tournament on Knoxon Reservoir, you face three classic qualifiers, six national qualifiers, and the entire field has competed at the divisional level. When entering a tournament at Knoxon, you will be fishing against some of the best anglers in the Western United States. This is Noxon. And to get any respect in Montana, you must be able to compete here. Montana fishermen win tournaments by utilizing a multitude of skill sets, techniques, approaches, and strategies. Jigs, drop shot, crankbait, swim baits, split shot, Nico rig, Carolina rig, Texas rig. Pitching and flipping, top water, hopping, dead stick, frogging, buzz bait, and reaction baits. All while utilizing a wide variety of lines, hooks, baits, reels, colors, sizes, and presentations. All that take years, yeah. sometimes decades, to perfect. Noxon is unforgiving. A first place in any past tournament provides you with absolutely no guarantee of even getting a bite the very next day. The lake is beautiful and ruthless. She will provide you with years of success only to humble and remind you that ego and a checkbook are not confidence. On this lake, winners rise and fall with the passing seasons of time. pursuit has no end. They are like the wolf. Constantly searching the environment for new prey. And the possibility of success. Successful competitive anglers have a common ability. They live and remain in this moment. Ignoring the harassment of the mind. They live on the edge of time. The 
reward from this life comes from testing yourself. These men stand alone against a world full of unpredictable factors. Working against hundreds or sometimes even 200 active competitors aiming towards the same goal on the same lake at the same time. The reward from this challenge is learning to trust yourself. It's called confidence. These individuals live their life's experience. Got it. Their friendships are deep. And they value their independence. As well as the opportunity to compete. And not just to win. their moments as the authentic self. Fishermen are not a tribe. They must stand alone and rely only on themselves. If they follow the pack listen to the local chatter or take advice from an arbitrary source. Tournament bass fishermen all know this strategy will lead to naive failure. Often a necessary lesson and proving ground. Success is not philosophical or theoretical. This is only the mind's perceptions. A tournament fisherman must live in the facts and execute only under this truth. In my own time, I begin to realize these men my human brothers a single species entity planetary experience are here with me for reason and purpose they are my teachers and my students I love them because of their authenticity, their integrity, their confidence, independence, and truth. Because they are honest with themselves and those around them. Because they trust the environment especially at the most challenging times. They are not influenced by outside opinions or pressure. They respect their life's experience and give back whenever possible. These men are not just a reflection of myself. They are a reflection of the best of us. I often long to be alone. Listening to the fish with all my senses. I feel powerful. 
powerful. It is the feeling, the possibility. <laughs>